guess you could say the conditions are not good. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Yeah, it's just, it's ridiculous today, guys. If y'all know, the weather's going to be really cold this weekend. That, well, it's in the 40s right now. It's raining. It's just, I don't feel like getting out there today. And, So me and Herbert did go fishing. We did catch some redfish, some nice sized redfish. If you don't know, there we go again. If you don't know, so if you don't know, in about six weeks we have the first series of tournaments. There's quite a few tournaments coming up, but I'm gonna focus on the Saltwater Survival Series, mainly because the other tournaments that are popping up don't allow motorized kayaks. Y'all leave me a Drop a message, what do y'all think about these motorized kayaks in tournaments? And so I'm just limited to some of them, but the one I'm focusing on right now is the Saltwater Survivor Series that's coming up uh, in about six weeks. So me and Herbert Azama did go out there. We did find some redfish. Unfortunately, I won't be able to make a good video with it because I'm cutting out so many pieces because of the spot. I just don't want, out of respect to other fishermen, I just don't want to expose anybody's spots. Um, this channel is just not going to be like that. I'm not going to be exposing spots everywhere. Now, when you fish the Texas City Dyke or you fish, uh, I don't know, the Spillway or anything like that that I have may have shown in my previous videos, these are just common spots that everybody actually already knows about. I'm just actually going out there making some content on the spot. Um, but when I weight fish, for instance, or if I'm out there kayaking certain spots, I'm really not gonna give up those spots. And that's one of the number one things people message me on. They always message me, do I do I guide? No, I don't guide. Um, and they even offer to pay for these spots, you know, like 100 bucks and stuff like that, which is, you know, they're not for sale. Um, these are just fishing spots. And a lot of these spots are not even my spots. A lot of these spots are spots that were shared to me by other people. And I, I would just wouldn't feel right selling somebody's spots that were shared to me. Yeah. But today, it looks like we are stuck in the office here today, guys. I ain't got much to do because it's raining outside. I ain't gonna do no fishing. So we gotta have to find something to talk about. I know. A couple of days ago, I emailed a, a old time representative. They contacted me 20 months ago about my kayak. And we're gonna talk about that today here on CRG Fishing. So, first thing, let me shut this door because it's cold and raining, and uh, yeah, can't have that. I'm gonna freeze for you guys. I'm gonna catch ammonia and get sick, and everybody can think I got COVID because I was simply trying to make a video and I had to work in the cold over here. First thing I'm gonna do is pull out this kayak. So we can talk about my old town auto fighter. So here it is guys, the Old Town Autopilot. Most of y'all are familiar with this kayak from other YouTubers probably in the area. They've spoken about this kayak and they highly speak about the kayak. And I'm gonna start this video off with the same thing. Um, is it a great kayak? Most definitely, it is a great kayak. Does it have its flaws? Yes it does, and we're gonna talk about that today. So, let's just jump right into it. The biggest flaw, well, I wouldn't say the biggest flaw, but one of the flaws that I've had to tackle since I first purchased this kayak is the dry box. The dry box hits the seat and doesn't open properly. So I actually made a video repairing the dry box. And uh, Ryan Lilly from Old Town, a representative from Old Town, actually contacted me about the video, thanking me about making the video, and explaining to me that they make a shim to fix this issue. So Old Town, when they first produced this kayak, they knew there was an issue there to the point that they made a shim. So I repaired the, uh, I repaired the dry box to what I believe was gonna fix it, and it does work. But here in Texas, the more you use this kayak, the worse the dry box gets. The kayak hull design, for some of y'all that have that, so for some of y'all that have this kayak will probably understand, the kayak hull design has two pontoons on the bottom. Kind of like that, okay? And then of course you have the two sides here with your deck right here. Kind of looks like that, I'm not the best artist in the world, but you kind of get the point. Of course, I'm 220 pounds, 217 pounds, right? And I'm sitting my 
butt right here in the center causing pressure here the entire time and during the summer times or no matter what time but during the summer times it's worse what's happening is the water pressure is pushing up on the pontoons right here right the whole platform is getting soft because of the sun or whatnot and it's causing the two sides to squeeze in and throughout the day within the first hour two hours you start noticing this this dry box here will get completely under the seat here it's, right now, see, it's not having that bottom seat. Of course, we're not doing it. But it gets com under the seat where it's almost completely inoperable, for me at least. Right? It's a big problem. Some people say, oh, just get a dry box, or it's not a big problem, just, you know, whatever. To me, it's a big problem, and I'm going to explain to you why it's a big problem here. So, leads to the second problem that I'm having with the kayak. The second problem is, and you can kind of see right now, what, well, the bar's in the way. I should take this kayak off of this, uh, I should take this kayak off of this uh, trailer here. But my second problem is, if you notice, right up in here, all that mud that's sitting right up in here, you see that there? And what's happening is, it's holding water here. Now, a lot of you guys know about this. If you just watch any review on this, if you watch just any review on this, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the representatives or influencers or whatnot are going to point this out. And the reason they're going to point it out is because it's the first thing you're going to notice. You're going to notice it's holding water right there, which isn't a big issue because some people will say, well, you're on a kayak. You're going to get wet. You're absolutely right. I'm on a kayak. I'm going to get wet. So it's not going to bother me. But this is where it becomes a problem. And this, this is a big problem for me. Let me get my uh, catch board. Catch board out. Place that right, right here where they say that it's uh, supposed to fit. Mine doesn't fit there, of course. And we're, we're gonna cut some light on here first, so that way we have a little bit more lighting in here. Oh yeah, now we can see. So where I was going with, I've, I've added some light here, so that way we can see a little bit better. So where I was going with, it's holding water here. Your drive box doesn't work. This is where you keep your cell phone at. O-Town actually sponsors the Bassmaster Series, which is ran by Tourney X, which we also have Tourney X here in Houston. We have Tourney X for everything. I don't do bass fishing much. but So you're running a Tourney X um, tournament, which requires your cell phone. You have to have your cell phone so you can take your picture. You have to have the required measuring board, which you know I'm using a catch board here, which O-Town even sells on their website. So they know... There a lot of people are actually going to be using these for tournaments or whatnot. They even sponsor a tournament the Bassmasters, right? So what's happening is I'm sitting here, I catch, and this has actually happened to me. So this is why it's, this is why it's a problem for me. I'm sitting here, I catch a fish, and I believed when I first caught this that this dry box was going to give me that problem, and I believed that I was going to fumble around with my phone because the dry box wouldn't work, and I was going to end up dropping my phone off the side of the boat or the kayak which is going to be a big problem when you're in a tournament that, that it's pretty much ran around Tourney X, which is ran around your cell phone. Now you're out there with no cell phone. Never happened though. What ended up happening was my dry box was not working. So I was having to keep my cell phone on me after measuring my fish, taking my pictures, leaning over to release the fish. I dropped my cell phone into the water right here. Dodo move, right? My fault. But it's a problem. So, I mean, I'm upset at this point. I'm like, boy, I mean, I'm pretty much out of the tournament now because my cell phone's sitting in a pile of water here and I have nothing to log in to check the stats to enter any more fish throughout the day. So it's, it's horrible. It's, it's a problem. But that doesn't happen just once. It happens twice to me. One time in a tournament, one time not in a tournament. So, anyways. So those are my two biggest concerns. The water that's holding here and the dry box, right? Which is easily fixable, in my opinion. Now, I'm no engineer for kayaks or nothing like that, but you can see, you can see here, that, get this thing out of the way here. You can see here that it's pretty clean all in this area. And what's happening, the water that is coming through the, uh, my phone, the water that is coming through the scupper plugs is kind of washing all the dirt and debris into this area right here. 
it's, 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 you know, this is just yesterday. I took the kayak out yesterday. That little jig right here. Um, right there. So I left this like that so that way you can see it's holding water there. I believe that if kayak would have just put one scarper plug similar to this one right here that has a little nipple like that, right into this area around here somewhere, you know, maybe put Old Town right here and do a little cutout, then not only would it prevent water from sta uh, stagnating or holding right there, but it would even be easier to wash the kayak. It is difficult to wash this kayak. You almost have to lean it over on its side every time. So yeah, if you would have just put a scuffle plug here, not only would it stop holding water there, but it would kind of self-clean itself. Because as if you get any dirt up on the, the deck space here, it would kind of wash out into that scuffle plug there. And it would make, make it a whole lot easier washing this kayak. Washing this kayak can be a chore. There's even another YouTuber here in the Houston area that has this kayak a mess. And he made good sense. You know, he goes out every day, blah, blah, blah. Well, I mean, the truth of the matter is it's hard to wash this kayak. It doesn't just, you can't just get the water hose and rinse it because the water doesn't go off the drains. It just kind of keeps stagnating right here. And you're exactly like this. It just keeps holding dirt there. Now, I normally do wash my kayak and I have figured out a way to wash it without turning it over, which kind of works. But anyways, and you can see back here, it stays completely clean. I can rinse it off easily and it drains out the plugs right there. So that's pretty good. So the two things, water here and the dry box. The third thing is my electrical. Now I understand anytime you add a lot of electrical onto a kayak and you start having trolling motors and sonars and more batteries and all this other good stuff, you are gonna have issues. On this side here, I did change it out three times. One time it went bad on me on another tournament, of course. I think I'm starting to have problems. I think it's starting to be my luck on tournaments. It's like stuff always happens on tournament day. Kind of kind of weird, right? So on another tournament day, me and Justin Garcia were fishing the ACK tournament out of uh, Galveston, Texas. Sometimes in these tournaments, when you get to the spot first, that's the, that's the difference between winning and losing. If you get to the spot first, nobody else could fish within 500 yards or 100 yards of you. And this may be where the fish is holding that day, especially on a low tide if you fish in a deep pocket or something like that. So me and Justin Garcia decided to wake up early. We're going to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, 4.30 in the morning, get on the water by 5 take an hour trip to the location that we're trying to get to because the first cast is at six and we want to try to get there early so that way other kayakers can't get there which makes a difference right well i wake up that morning and my uh electrical plug failed on me kind of embarrassing everybody was leaving you see all the other kayakers leaving justin is kind of waiting on me and my poor plug went bad i wasn't too upset even though i was a little upset i wasn't too upset because like I ended up rigging it so that way it could work that day. Got my fishing done or whatnot and continued on with my day. Came back to the shop, fixed it. Within three months later, it went bad again. So I thought to myself, well, maybe it was my fault. Maybe I'm not taking care of my product right. Maybe I'm not doing something right. So now the third time that I changed, I actually greased it all up, taking more care of it, rinsing it out. I actually turned the female plugs on the outside and the male plugs on the inside because with the, female, with the female plugs on the inside, it was real hard for me to clean out these prongs and maintain it properly. This way, it's a little bit more easier to maintain. So I'm hoping that's gonna work out. But I don't wanna just be a Nick about this, right? I just don't wanna complain about the Old Town Autopilot. Is it a great kayak? It is great, I love this thing. It is extremely stable. I stand up on this thing and fish. The remote on my neck and I cruise around like a little bass boat, sight casting redfish in the, in the marshes. It's a great kayak. So anyways, so I reached out to Johnson Outdoors and uh, well, this is what they had to say. Ryan, thank you for your quick response 20 months ago on my purchase of the AP120. Unfortunately, I have never received the whole shim kit to reduce the friction and use of the dry box. I'm, cur I'm currently working on another social media video speaking about the drawbacks I have had with this platform in almost two years of use. With my registration about to expire, I'm trying to explain to my viewers why I would continue to purchase and use this platform in 2022. In my video, three topics are discussed about this kayak. The dry box issue, the water that sits at the seat, the electrical plugs. I'm reaching out to you to see if anything has been done about these issues on the new 2022 platforms. Their response was, hello, can you provide me with your shipping address? I have a shim kit sent out to you ASAP. Now really at this point, 20 months later, I really 
not too concerned about the shim kit now i am interested in it when they do send it to me i will keep you up to date on it and if any of y'all have used the shim kit or if any of y'all have seen a video on the shim kit please share it with me i would love to see it if not i will make a video on it to see what old towns what, what old town is doing to solve this issue yeah nothing they didn't they didn't answer my questions so what that means is they probably did nothing they're probably still producing the exact same kayak with no changes in it now if there is any changes they didn't want to answer my question i guess i'm not a big influencer or big enough influencer i should say i did not want to tell them much information about me and if there was any influence that i did have on it because i didn't think i needed to you know what i mean so anyways, thank you for watching this episode of CRG Fishing, of me ranting and raving and complaining about my Old Town Autopilot, something I spent four grand on. I still love this kayak though, it's my baby man. I love this kayak. When I, you know, take it out with a couple of other group of guys, they're just like, wow, when I stand up and start using my trolling motor. Yeah.